Sonic has had a lot of friends and foes within his adventures, and honestly, I think that's one of the best parts about Sonic is the amount of characters that we have in the series. From having super cool designs to super unique powers and overall just really cool personalities, I think that it is a great part of the Sonic series and I wish it's something that they touched on more. And truly something as of lately, it seems like they've tried to put more dedication into with the DLC of Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Superstars. But there's a lot of characters that end up getting forgotten along the way or just are never playable again. For instance, Silver the Hedgehog and Sonic 06 and never being playable in a mainline story ever again. Or even a more recent Sonic game of Sonic Forces with Infinite never being mentioned ever again. I mean, the guy couldn't even get a spot in Team Sonic Racing for that fact. But that's exactly what I wanted to touch on today and talk about who is the most deserving of a spin-off Sonic game. Very similar to Shadow the Hedgehog 2005, where he's got a standalone game where it's completely based around him with story and gameplay surrounding Shadow. And there are definitely so many unique characters inside of the Sonic series, but in this video today, I'm going to give my top 5 on who I think deserves Sonic spin-off games the most. The only rule that I have for myself inside of this list is I'm going to exclude Sonic for obvious reasons of being the main character, and Shadow for having a more recent spin-off game where the game was completely dedicated to him. But I am going to allow Knuckles and Tails to be able to be on this list if I so choose, just because of the simple fact that their games are quite old. So without further ado, here's my top 5 list of characters I think deserve a Sonic spin-off the most. Number 5, Knuckles the Echidna. I think Knuckles is one of the coolest characters inside of the Sonic series and one of the most deserving to be on this list. Knuckles obviously always kind of being the right hand man to Sonic has never truly gotten the opportunity to kind of shine in his own game. Sure he has been playable in a lot of games such as the Adventure Games 06 and even now Frontiers and Superstars, I would really like to see a game stand alone with only Knuckles. And I think Knuckles could do really awesome in an open world setting. Sure I don't think the game should be completely surrounded by treasure hunting, but I think having an open world section like that could really tie into that treasure hunting aspect to the game. And don't get me wrong, I do really like the treasure hunting stuff, I just don't think that's something that we need an entire game about, and I think that Knuckles is so much more than just treasure hunting. I do think it could be really cool going around the world like I was saying with getting different treasure around the islands or even possibly around Angel Island. They'll unlock different cosmetics, different skills, and also possibly even in different levels inside the game, but I really don't think this should be the main focus of the game. I would really like to see just the simple point of getting to the goal similar to many other Sonic games, and possibly even kind of like in the adventure style, but the levels being designed around, you know, climbing and gliding as such that Knuckles does. And I think overall, Knuckles could have one of the coolest stories there is for a spin-off game, especially kind of discovering some of his past when he was a kid, being in the Echidna tribe, and also just how he got the job of being the Master Emerald's protector. And I think it would be awesome to explore the area like Sky Sanctuary or even Angel Island in an open world aspect. I think you could do so many different cool references and easter eggs and also just go into a lot more lore of the Sonic series. As I think that Knuckles has some of the deepest lore there is inside of the actual series. And it would also be really cool to kind of see him have certain flashbacks of the Echidna tribe with having the help of possibly to call in Chaos make their returns. With both of them being inside of the Master Emerald, I think it could be really cool to kind of see them guide Knuckles in certain areas in the past with also helping him learn of certain things that happened back then. But we could also get even more close to kind of how the Chaos Emeralds started or were discovered by the Echidna tribe along with the Master Emerald. I mean, they did such a poor job of explaining in Frontiers, hopefully they would do a little bit better in a Knuckles style game. But this could even tie into the Frontiers story as well with kind of even going more in the past of how everyone on those islands and the Guardians created the Emeralds. At least that's what I got from Frontiers, I guess I am not 100% sure because it's so damn confusing. But ultimately, I do think a Knuckles game would go to more depth of what the Master Emerald and Chaos Emeralds actually truly are. But besides to call in Chaos, if I had to pick a character that could potentially be playable alongside Knuckles as a side character, I would definitely pick Rouge the Bat. Not only being a treasure hunter, but also having great chemistry with Knuckles, I think it'd be really cool to see her help out Knuckles, or possibly just mess with Knuckles overall. I do think it would be really cool to kind of introduce Shade the Echidna back into the mainline Sonic games as well, opposed to just being from Sonic Chronicles, but I understand with the kill Ken Pender situation that that might not be possible, so potentially making a new villain or somebody from the past in the Echidna tribe be a different type of villain in the game. But Ultimately, I think that this game could do really well and I would really like to see this happen. Number 4, Eggman and Metal Sonic. Now, going into more of the villain direction of this list, I decided to put Eggman and Metal Sonic as the same character inside of this list just because I think their stories would be so similar and they're both very deserving of their own games. 
And plus, I think that their two stories would intertwine pretty easily. I have always wanted more of a villain oriented game inside of the Sonic series to kind of see what goes on behind the scenes in the Eggman Empire. And I think there'd be no better way than to using these two characters to absolutely explain what actually goes on in the Eggman Empire from what we don't see behind the scenes. But I also think that this could create for some awesome level design and also possibly even insane creations with Eggman. I think it would want to be really cool to build stuff with Eggman, very similar to almost the style of Tears of the Kingdom, where you're able to take certain parts and create your own Eggman robot with them, and then go out and fight other Sonic characters against it. I understand that that wouldn't be your typical Sonic game, but I think that would fit Eggman so well, being able to design your own certain things and possibly even failing in the process and having to go back and rebuild certain things to, you know, actually succeed in the game. And yes, you could do more of a mech oriented game, but honestly, I don't really want to see that just for an Eggman standalone game, as I think that he is so much more than just a simple mech and a shooter. But it would also be really cool to kind of see what goes on in Eggman's head as he's planning in uncertain schemes. We do see a lot of that in certain cutscenes within past Sonic games, but I would really like to see it kind of play out. I think that this is a game that could have alternative endings, very similar to Shadow the Hedgehog 2005, depending on, you know, what tasks you do or what different style of robots that you actually create. I think that could be really cool for Eggman, you know, to have those many different endings and honestly could give you so much replayability with building different things inside of the Eggman Empire. Whether it's the super big death egg or the death egg robot similar style or even a different metal character, I mean, how cool would it be to just build a metal silver and then just go out and fight silver with it? I think that'd be such a cool thing to do or even just build your own Metal Sonic for that fact. But that's also why I think Metal Sonic could potentially fit in this game somewhere. I think Metal Sonic could still kind of keep that fast paced style that we're used to in Sonic games where you go out on missions with Metal Sonic to fight Sonic or even potentially collect certain things for Eggman. Whether it be collecting parts or just ripping Sonic's guts out. I mean, you could truly do anything with Metal Sonic, he's just such a badass of a character. But alternatively, you could also potentially even lead the Eggman Empire that we see in the IDW comics, very similar to Neo Metal Sonic does. That could also be a cool way to intertwine, you know, the two characters. And I definitely think that Metal Sonic is 100% overdue for a modern style game, as we barely have gotten him playable at all, and he is by far one of the most fan favorited characters. But ultimately, I would still really like to see a villain oriented game. And I think that could do really well considering how one popular Eggman is, but two also as popular as a lot of his mechs are. And I truly hope that Sega potentially considers, you know, a villain oriented game in the future, even if it's not Eggman. Number three, Blaze the Cat. Blaze the Cat is by far one of the coolest characters that I think we have in the Sonic series, and in my personal opinion, my favorite female protagonist in the entire series. With Blaze already being an alternate version of Sonic, I think she would easily fit into the Sonic style, but in my personal opinion, I don't think we should go back to the Rush style for Blaze. Instead, I think we should actually go more towards the adventure style or even the 06 style for Blaze as I think that fits her the complete best with her flame abilities. And I think one of the biggest examples for this is actually Project 06, even though it's not an official Sonic game. I think Chaos X and his team do such an incredible job on how Blaze performs and plays in those games that I would love to see a game completely surrounded by that. With having super awesome jump moves and also different flame abilities used inside of this, I think that her combat and also speed could be so much fun to play. And that's not even to mention the fact that she can completely transform into Burning Blaze that could potentially be a way to get through the stage or even just an awesome boss fight in the end. I think you could explore the different worlds inside of Blaze's dimension and also collecting the Soul Emeralds along the way. And I really like the style that Frontiers kind of put where you're collecting all the Chaos Emeralds and fighting off a big boss in each world and I think that would fit perfectly for Blaze to turn into Burning Blaze after each world and fighting a really big baddie. But I also think this is a really cool way that you could potentially bring back characters from her dimension, such as like Johnny or even Marine, even though a lot of people don't necessarily like them, I think they deserve a second chance at that. And they don't have to be super huge parts of the story, but it'd be really cool to see them make a return and possibly just have a redemption from the way that they were in Sonic Rush Adventures. You could even potentially tie in Silver in some way, considering that he travels to the past and present, and it was such a big part of Blaze's life in Sonic 06, so I think you could easily possibly make him a side character to be playable as well. I think Blaze would be one of the easiest characters to create a game for, being one of the best characters inside of the series, but also having some of the coolest abilities that there is. I think this quite literally could be one of the easiest ways for Sega to possibly make a spin-off game and still keeping it traditional that Sonic style that we know and love. Number two, Espio the Chameleon. Espio is definitely one of the coolest characters when it comes to the Sonic series and honestly probably the most underrated there is. And even just the Chaotix for that fact. 
With being able to use kunais, go invisible, and also just having some insane ninja-like techniques, I think it'd be super cool to see how his own game would play out. Now, I do think that this still could be a detective-style game, very similar to that of the chaotic story in Sonic Heroes, but I would like to see this more based around Espio opposed to doing all the chaotics. Sure, it would be great to have Charmy and Vector be inside of the game and also help you out along your adventure, it'd also be really cool to see Knuckles and Mighty make the return inside of the Chaotix, but I do think that this game should be totally focused on Espio. And I think his detective work could be really cool to actually do with being able to sneak around different hub worlds with his different invisibility ideas, but also being able to sling across potentially rooftops or certain areas of the game with his kunais. And even with that, still being able to keep that true Sonic style with Espio still being a faster paced character at that. I think this game could truly be super awesome and also kind of a different change of pace inside of the Sonic series opposed to always going fast when it actually pays out to actually slow down and kind of explore a little bit more. And I truly think there could be endless content in a game like this, especially with having different side quests to help different Sonic characters with detective work. But there definitely should still be a mainline story where you're trying to find something going on inside the game. What they could be mainly looking for in terms of the main story could be really interesting and even kind of similar to what they do in the IDW comics where they're continuing to search for different stuff with Eggman. I think it'd be really cool to, you know, search within Eggman's ships or even the egg carrier for that fact or the death egg or different abandoned Eggman areas to see what's going on and being able to tip off to Sonic or Knuckles and kind of letting them know like, hey, Eggman is up to certain things, but also helping them along their journeys. And I still think that's a cool way that you could still implement the likes of Sonic or other main characters inside the game. I don't think they should be playable for that fact, but it would still be really cool to see them inside of the story, similar to what Shadow did, where all the mainline Sonic characters are still in the game. And I do think that a detective game might not truly sound like it would sell very much, but I truly think that this could be one of the most fun Sonic games that there is. But ultimately, even if they didn't make a whole game based around Espio, I would really hope that they would consider about making him a playable character again, as I think that he could easily fit into any Sonic game for that fact, and easily be one of the coolest characters to play with. I mean, ultimately, it is pretty sad just how much Sega does not use the Chaotix anymore. I mean, it's great that they're using them in the IDW comics and Ian Flynn is deciding to continue to use them, but I would really like to see them be more involved in the games. And I think it would be really easy for detective work to potentially go back to certain areas within the Sonic series, whether it be from Spagonia and Unleashed or going to different areas like Station Square for that fact. I think it'd be such a cool thing to go back and revisit certain areas that Sonic has been, and even with the different Eggman bases and having different potential areas with that. And it would be such an easy way to bring back a lot of returning characters. I mean, heck, I mean, even Station Square bringing back the likes of Tikal. Or even, I mean, I know everyone hates her, I mean, going back to places like Soliana and bringing back Elise for that fact. It could be such an easy way for Sega to bring back a lot of returning characters and include them inside of an SBO or a chaotic style game. I mean, hell, you could even investigate in what happened to Infinite after Forces. I mean, that's still kind of a recent event and would even tie into somewhat of the IDW comics being placed right after it. So I think ultimately the kind of ideas are endless for a game like this, especially a detective game at that. I think it'd be so cool to dig a deeper dive into a lot of Sonic lore inside of a detective game, and I really hope that they would consider doing something like this in the future. Number one, and who I think is the most deserving of a Sonic spin-off game, is none other than Silver the Hedgehog. Silver is my favorite character inside of the Sonic series besides the blue guy himself. And I think his story would be such an easy thing for Sega to actually do with having his time travel abilities. I think being able to play certain levels in the past, present, and future would be some of the most insane level design we've seen in the Sonic series. Say Silver ran through Green Hill in the future, this could completely look different from what it would actually look like in the past or the present. And I think that this could help out with a lot of the replayability in itself in the game, with having either different level design or even looks that it does in the past, present, and future. Very similar to that of Sonic CD. I think if you take a lot of ideas from Sonic CD and modernize it and put it into Silver's story, I think that that could work fantastic. But having that future and past aspect to it, I think that would be absolutely insane to see what they could do for Silver with that. I think that his gameplay style should be very similar to Project 06 with the way Chaos X did his gameplay. With one making Silver actually pretty damn fast in terms of his running animation and also his flying, but also having to fire off different psychokinesic waves. And I think it'd be really cool to have a skill tree very similar to that of Sonic Frontiers inside of this game, unlocking different psychokinesic powers and abilities throughout the game. And I truly think that the psychokinesic powers truly are endless to what they could potentially do or create with them. 
and I think a skill tree would be a perfect way to continue to unlock things throughout the game. I think story-wise, it'd be really cool to kind of see Silver's past with potentially meeting Blaze, but also progressing throughout the game and kind of seeing what's going on with his current future. And even seeing kind of what happened after 06 and what Silver went through without his friend Blaze around, and just seeing how he rebuilt his future as well, just to see how much has changed since the Flames of Disaster. I think there is so much more to explain with Silver, and just kind of seeing everything that he's gone through his entire life would be such a cool thing to see, and honestly something that I'm personally very interested in when it comes to Sonic lore. Now, I'm not the biggest lore guy when it comes to the Sonic series, but I've always been really interested in Silver's story. Seeing what happened as a kid, potentially seeing his family, or even how he became friends with Blaze would be really interesting to me, but also leading up to the events of 06, just seeing how he got there and how he decided to become a hero or just learned his psychokinesic powers, or was he just born with them? I don't know, it'd be really cool to see. Or even seeing the stuff that led up after 06 with seeing how he progressed through life without his best friend Blaze. Or even potentially seeing him go back to the present to, you know, see if he can find some different things in Sonic, but also take a lot of lessons from him. I mean, for instance, he does this quite a few times in the IDW comics and even the games where he comes back to help Sonic and friends. It'd be really cool to see him also do that within the story, but also, I would really like to see his future as well. I'd really like to see how he completely rebuilt after Iblis was gone and kind of see, you know, how life is or how, you know, other characters are doing inside of his, introducing new characters inside of that future and just seeing how the world was rebuilt. You see very little of that in the IDW comics with the different pictures here and there of seeing what his future actually looks like, but I'd really like for them to go into more depth of this as I think Silver is one of the coolest characters when it comes to lore and abilities. And even with kind of going over stuff in the past as a kid, or even during the events of 06, you could still make Blaze a playable character as a side character inside of the story. I don't think that she should necessarily always be by Silver's side in this complete game, but I do think it'd be really cool to have her in the game a lot. There's so much unanswered about Silver's actual lore and stories, I think they could do an awesome job with this depending on how they did it. I easily think that Silver is definitely the most deserving of a spin-off game with having super in-depth story but also some insane powers, and I really hope that this does happen if they ever do decide to continue to make a spin-off game similar to the game Shadow. But ultimately, that's just my personal opinion and my personal list. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments or characters that you would potentially like to see have their own spin-off game and how those could potentially work. I would love to see what you guys think inside of the community. But if you'd like to see more rankings or top 5s on the channel and also more discussions, be sure to hit that like button down below and also be sure to subscribe as it does help out a lot, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.